for there is no one like you in heaven, on earth and beneath the earth. There is none beside you and there is none to be compared unto you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercies. Father, Lord, um, I stand upon the authority that is in the name of Jesus. And I come against every form of distraction. I come against every evil forces. I come against every plot of the enemy. For we know, Lord, that when the sons of God gather, even Satan used to show up. But Father, we take authority over his works and his plans in this meeting. And um, we render every plot and plan powerless and useless. Father, Lord, let your name be exalted. Father, let your word, let the heart of everyone in this meeting be the fertile soil that the seed would germinate it to produce 30 fold 60 fold and a hundred fold and father at the end when all is said and done let all the glory let all the honor let all the praise and adoration be ascribed to you and you alone forever in jesus name we pray amen and amen all right can i get a response just to be sure that um you all can hear me can someone just say amen to the prayers? Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you so much. Amen. Uh, thank you for responding. And so um, something very profound happened last week. So probably I should start there. And so Mr. Damola and the wife uh, had been saying I should teach since um, last since this year really i think and so i've been taking it as a joke sorry i'm trying to move to another device now okay sorry for the echo and so i've been taking it as a play and we don't take it seriously but this month uh when they mentioned that um i should i would have to teach in one of the mondays at the back end i just told myself i like her victoria probably uh, I just said to God, if you really needed me to teach, you'd have to tell me what I would need to say exactly, because I really don't know what to say. And so that was Monday last week before the teaching began, and Mr. Alexi finished teaching, and then Mr. Tosin, and as immediately as Mr. Tosin started speaking. I was like, okay, God, you have given the expo you gave me to him. <laughs> what do we do now? But, um, you know, God works in mysterious ways. That got to confirm that um, I've heard several people say that the Holy Spirit is in this place. God is in this place. And so I know that in many ways, we all have also received some confirmations about the presence of the Lord at the tribe of marketplace ministers. So I just said that to assure someone again, perhaps, I don't know why I'm saying I'm going this direction. This is not what I meant, where I meant to go, but, but it's fine. The Holy Spirit is here. And so to tell someone that God is here, the Holy Spirit is here. God is still doing wonders and miraculous things. God is still speaking through his people to us. And so when Mr. Tosin's uh, internet service went bad, I felt like saying, okay, let's continue from there. Where did we stop? Okay, <laughs> I could know, I knew exactly what was supposed to have been said next. And so that's our God. He just walks in very awesome and um, wonderful ways. And so we give him praise. And I trust that um, he would speak his word to us today. And so as I was pondering about... Um, restoration of the lost fortune and so i began to ask god what exactly uh do you want to tell your people and so uh it, it came the response came more like um a question and so uh the, the it, it went this way was like um because fortune when we talk about fortune it's something that is of a very high value, something of great worth. 
and then uh, I had if a fortune is something of worth and great value, what then can be more valuable than a person's destiny? What else uh, can be more valuable than the purpose for which God has created a person to be? And you'd see that it goes much in line with what uh, Mr. Tosin had begun to share last week before uh, the network issue happened. And so I would still speak in that line. I know that God really has a word for someone. That's why he would um, lay the same emphasis in the heart of two people that need to speak about uh, the restoration of lost fortunes. And if you had not listened to what uh, Mr. Alexi had taught last week, um, it's out on our YouTube channel. Do well to do that. And so when we are talking about... Um, this lost fortunes coming to i know that we all know that it's not just about silver or gold or material things we are all well aware of that that's why in matthew chapter 6 verse 33 god says seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness you know seeking the first the kingdom of god what god is simply saying is that you should seek to become that which god had created you to be you should seek to fulfill purpose when i remember when i used to hear that um bible verse i would think that um it meant okay seek to become a pastor <laughs> seek to become just something very serious in church seek to become a deacon i remembered when i was a teenager i used to go quite early to church ex- uh, for weekly activities and when i go i i I'll just like to clean around dust the chairs if there are any dirt on the floor just pick them around if i find broom sweep and all of that and t- make the place tidy enough for those that are coming to the service i wasn't in any of the department in the church um, or i i thought i was a teenager i was too young to be burdened by whatever they were doing in church and so but i could just do those little things when i go And so this fateful day, I was doing my usual, just cleaning, dusting chairs. And this man walked into the church. I think he was a deacon, something. He held a position in church and and asked me, are you a member? Are you, um, have you done your membership class? And I said, no. He said, are you a worker? Okay, that was his word. He said, are you a worker? And the first thing that would come out of my mouth, I said, I'm only a teenager. (laughs) And he said, you should join the workforce. I've been seeing what you do when you co- you come to church early and you're always cleaning and dusting everywhere. You should be a worker. Since that day, I stopped going early. I just go as at the time of service when everybody's entering, just to avoid, because I never for any uh, way wanted to be a pastor or a deacon or a pastor assistant. You know, that was the mindset I grew up with, that when they say serving God, you just have to be a pastor. You must stand up on the pulpit and preach the word of God. I like the word of God. I like to share the word of God, but I didn't, I never wanted to share it from the pulpit. And so, but as I grew up in um, the faith, I got to know that um, seeking first the kingdom of God isn't about becoming a pastor. Probably that's where you are called to seek the first of God. I'm not saying that is completely out of it but if that's where your destiny is becoming a pastor becoming a pulpit minister please just seek ye first the kingdom of god and so uh seeking out speak on this uh based on talking about um becoming exactly who god wants us to be and um when you read that verse it says and all other things shall be added unto you all the silver all the gold shall then be added unto you because in fulfillment of purposes is the silver and the gold in fulfillment of purposes is all the other things the low hanging fruits that we are look that we are uh, that our eyes are focused on at the moment and when we look at our father of faith abraham and um and this is seeking first the kingdom of god is tied to obedience and so we go to the father of faith abraham how he sought the kingdom of god first by obeying when god said leave your father's kindred go to a place i would show you and all of that and abraham packed his load and left 
in genesis chapter 13 there was he had gone into egypt and then when in genesis chapter 13 verse 2 sorry i was uh, hoping i'll be able to share while uh, i'll be able to speak while i share screen i'm trying to get that sorted out so just bear with me if the screen is blank at the moment i thought i had sorted out everything before i started this but i just realized that and so um in genesis 13 verse to uh, verse one and two from verse one it says that um then abram abram he was still even answering his um name abram it says and abram went up from egypt sorry let me try to share that then abram went up from egypt he and his wife and all that he had and lot with him to the south. Abram was very rich in livestock, in silver and in gold. But this is not what brought him to that. It was because he obeyed God. He had left and he had hope in this God that had called him that this God would take him to where he wanted him to be. And you know, in um, the Lord's prayer, when we talk about um, the kingdom of God, seeking first the kingdom of God. In the Lord's Prayer, when Jesus would teach his disciples to pray, let's go there. In Matthew chapter 6 from verse 9 to 10, he says, in, in this manner, therefore pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. After you have given God the reference, after you have hallowed his name, the most the next important thing is seeking the kingdom of god every other thing is give us this day our daily bread you see that there are the all other things that are added but seeking the kingdom of the lord who has is it that god wants me to be what am i here for what's the purpose that is the greatest fortune that is um if you are talking about restoration of lost fortunes and we see that a lot of us have lost it and so that's and then uh, like if it's not um, if it was just wealth and riches and what have you there would have been no need for a restoration it would have just been a replacement okay this is what you lost uh, replaced it with new one with a more advanced one or with an updated version of it there would be no need for restoration just the replacement that goes to also confirm to us that when we talk about restoration it's not just about material things it goes deeper than that and um the other part um the other thing i would like to say so as i was saying it goes deeper than that and you see that this disobedience it it all started in the garden of eden probably would not blame adam and eve i mean these are people that um that have not even lived life before and they are telling them when you eat this fruit you will you will die and so they didn't understand what death was because they've not even lived before that was why uh you know when uh eve ate the fruit and then passed it over to adam and god came and was looking for them adam said the woman you gave me you know they blamed god and god said okay going forward you would be the one man you would be the one to choose your wife i'll just you just only know what you need for a wife and then whichever one you see that character in and you take that's your responsibility and when you go further after there was so much sin on the earth it says it repented god i'm sure it repented god when he had told them that um, when you eat this fruit you are going to die perhaps he would have used the language that he used for the children of israel what he did in deuteronomy chapter 28. you know in deuteronomy chapter 28 when um moses was telling them about the blessings and the crisis he used the language that they would understand. I don't, that, that, that Bible, it's not actually my favorite Bible verse. I really, that Deuteronomy 28, I really don't like reading it because every time if I read a verse, I'll just take a deep breath like, oh my, 
this is too much each verse i'll just have to take a deep breath to recover before i'll go on to the next one you know so he he but he he, he now came in the language that they would understand talking about their fruit talking about their land talking about their crops talking about their pots talk things that they could relate to because i think when he said to adam and eve when you eat this fruit you shall die i have not lived before i have not died before so i would probably not understand what it means to live or to die but here he took his time and told them exactly that's why you know when you are going through all this trouble what is being affected is mostly these things that you are seeing these things that you know the things that are tangible the things you know the world is materialistic the material things didn't even start today we always stress everything back to genesis and that's actually where it started from with eve you know what she saw she didn't have any idea that what it meant was that you would lose your position you would lose the fellowship with god you would lose becoming whom god had wanted you to be you would no longer be able to fulfill destiny probably you would even fulfill it but probably a part of it not fully into it that what that's why when she saw the fruit and they said the fruit was beautiful and she looked upon it and i'm like i, I would really because it can't have it definitely cannot be apple i've looked at fruits apple is definitely not the most beautiful one <laughs> you know they said it's because it's shaped like the heart of a man that's why they said it was apple that adam that eve ate but i definitely doubt it was apple because our apple can with all the fruits we have on the earth apple cannot be the most beautiful one Haba. with all the colorful fruits it cannot it's 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 definitely not an apple and so she looked at it it was beautiful that's why the devil uses the material things to tempt us the position looks very enticing the thing looks very inviting the thing is very it's it's just very beautiful and then we forget that is not what the target is that is not actually the contention but that that always come like the distraction that distract us like okay it, it's not this you know like the bible says that we should store up our treasures in heaven we are neither wrath or mouth and would think, think he's just doing good to people so that would have it being kind to the poor being kind to the widow being kind to so that probably would um god would know that since matthew 25 from um, 31 says i was hungry you gave me to eat i was this you gave me and so we think that's just the major treasure it means focus your heart it also means focus your heart on the things that you are called to become where moth and wrath would not get to it where the enemy would not corrupt it where the enemy would not have a hand in it and and it's in the place of obedience we we suffer the most here all of us in disobedience uh that is where we suffer the most uh let me just take us to a bible verse in isaiah in isaiah chapter 48 um isaiah chapter 48 from verse 17 to 19. isaiah 48 um, 17 to 19 this is this was god speaking you know we know that the prophet isaiah was one of the prophets that god used to warn the israelites for all their disobedience and misbehaviors and uh, it came to it says thus says the lord your redeemer the holy one of israel i am the lord your god who teaches you to profit who leads you by the way you should go all that you had heeded my commandment then your peace would have been like a river and your righteousness like the waves of the sea your descendants also would have been like the sun and the offspring of your body like the grains of sun yet his name would not have been cut off nor destroyed before me if only you obey if only you seek first the kingdom of the lord if only you consult god and like what am i here to be how do I preserve this fortune? But uh, uh, and then uh, uh, how do I pre- what 
what do you want me to become he says because he's the one that knows what he wants us to become he's the one that created us in the first place says everything there's nothing that was made that was not made by him all things that were made were made through him and so he made us he knows what we should be and he says if only we oh heed his commandments if only that's why the uh, bible which verse that says a portion that says says if a man's way pleases the lord says he will make even his enemies to be at peace with him says so if only you heed my commandment then your peace would be like a the wave like a river uh, there's a song we used to sing i've got joy like a river when you go to a river but even a stream a little stream early in the morning i remember my growing up days you go to the stream the water is so still calm quiet and very peaceful it says that's how your peace would be you would have no trouble you would have no issues casting and binding it it would just go very smooth and so that's what the lord is saying to us we, you only need to obey you only need to heed and so the lack of uh, obedience has caused us a lot of of fall it is causing us a lot of losses and it is true disobedience that we lose our destiny and our purposes which is the real fortunes that we have because if it was like i said earlier if it was just the material things god would not talk about restoration it would have just been a replacement but because we live in some of us we live in ignorance we had lived in ignorance we had lived in disobedience and all what we were like esau let's um look at the story of esau you know when esau came to meet the brother and he said give me a portion he was like many of us you know he was frustrated he was hungry and all of that uh, many of us that would say god just borrow, borrow me 20 million from my 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 future account I know that I'll, I'll make it i'll make it later in life but just borrow me some money from there that was what he was doing he was borrowing but he didn't know what he was borrowing was going to affect his future and so in genesis chapter 27 verse 37 to 40 it says then isaac answered and said to esau indeed i have made of uh, sorry i don't think this is where i wanted is this where i wanted to read first okay where i wanted to read first was um where um sorry pardon me for that okay where esau had gone to jacob and asked him to give him the portion i I, i'm not sure i opened that and so he he gave it to him and then he ate and he regained his strength he actually didn't know what he did then when he realized what he had done what error he had done was when their father isaac had told him go and kill this for me and come let me bless you and as faith would have it um rebecca was there who if dropped in the conversation and took sight with jacob and they got what they did done and then when esau returned after the blessing had been collected um let's now read from Genesis chapter 27 from verse 37 to 40 says, Then Isaac answered and said to Esau, Indeed, I have made him your master. That's talking about Jacob. And all his brethren I have given uh, him as servants. With grain and wine I have sustained him. What shall I do now for you, my son? And Esau said to his father, Have you only one blessing, my father? Bless me, me also, O oh my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. You know, this is the position of most of us, especially here in Africa. You know, we just like, I, I don't know what black magic or whatever demons the other nations did, but I, the, the black magic that is practiced in our nation, it is so deep that it has altered our destinies. And so we are in this place that we are crying. We are saying, is there no, is, is not, is there not a single blessing left for me? I know that my father had been disobedient, had gone to worship whatever. They didn't know what they did. There's, um, while my dad was still alive, there was something he did. He got sick one time and did one thing. And my dad's been late for 30 years now. We are yet to fully recover from what was done. 
and i know a lot of us here on this call there are things that our fathers or forefathers they had gone to places they were not supposed to go some of our parents had taken us to places seeking for protection not knowing they were even mounting up many issues for us and so that had deprived us of the fortune the greatest fortune that god had given us which is our destiny which is the the one thing that god had had wanted us to be in obedience to becoming what god uh, had wanted abraham to be because god wanted to raise a nation after his name that he would call his own and then he found abraham and walked with abraham to achieve that but uh, for some of us our parents they had done they didn't walk with god because of the understanding they had because of the darkness that they dwelled in they had done and then we as their children we are coming to say is there not a blessing left for me bless me oh my father he said he lifted up his voice you know as as um as a compassionate father said then isaac his father answered and said to him behold your dwelling shall be of the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above by your sword you uh, you shall live and you shall serve your brother and it shall come to pass when you become restless that you shall break the yoke of your neck well you know the thing is that most of us we we don't like where we are we actually really want to become that which god wants us to be we are tired even but that's where some of us end it just being tired you know when you're tired you take a rest i remember when I grew up in the village, we would go to farm on your way to farm. When you see a tree, they shed, you drop your load there and get some rest. When you are rested enough, you go back to your load, the heavy load, you put it on your neck. As many, as often as you can rest along the way, it, depending on how many trees you see, sometimes you just go into someone's farm, the cassava, when they are very tall up there, you just go under there and take shed. After you have regained some strength that you know you can go probably for a few more miles, you take up your load and begin. That's where we are, most of us. We do a prayer here today, do a prayer there, and then we begin to see one or two things change. And then we have access again to the low hanging fruit and fruit. And that's where we, we end it, just being tired. When we regain the strength, we carry up the load again and continue the journey to know where to where exactly. But you know, you have to, to, to actually come to the restoration of your lost fortune. You have to be restless, but don't be restless for the wrong thing. For the wrong reason rather it says here that when you are restless you break that you shall break his yoke off your neck and you see esau became restless for the wrong thing because in genesis chapter 33 when uh esau needed jacob needed to go back i said jacob looked up and saw Jacob looked up and there saw Esau coming with his 400 men. Are you going to fight a battle? You are going to welcome your brother home and you are showing up with 400 men. Little wonder Jacob was, <laughs> was excessively afraid. Like, why is this guy coming with 400 men? Are we fighting a war? And so Jacob began to divide, but that's not our focus. And then Jacob gave him the things and Esau said what does this mean all these cartels and what have you he said my brother it is for you Esau said to him I also have enough and so when Esau sold the bed right and then when he became restless and then had wealth and riches he thought that was the end but that wasn't it he still missed it because that wasn't it what exactly he lost was the covenant that God then established through the ge generation of Jacob. Are we going to talk about Judah? Judah who um, now the lineage of Christ. Are we going to talk about the sons of Issachar that the Bible says they had the understanding of time? Are we going to talk about um, Levi, the lineage of priesthood? This is the main thing that Esau missed. It wasn't the wealth and the riches. That he also had that he also had acquired so much uh in verse 8 esau asks what is uh, that's the verse 8 of um genesis 33 it says esau asks what what's the meaning of all these flocks and herds i met jacob said to find favor in your eyes my lord but esau said i already have plenty my brother keep 
what you have for yourself and jacob said please no accept it and then esau was in his mind saying my brother is coming back with all of this i i even have times three of what he has but that wasn't it that wasn't what he missed it was the destiny the lineage of christ perhaps would have been through esau now we would have been talking about the god of abraham isaac and esau esau but we are talking about the god of abraham isaac and jacob and so that is our main contention that is the fortune that we need restored our destinies that thing that the lord had made us to be here upon the face of the earth and that is where god is calling us let your restlessness not be oh i have one house i have two houses i have five cars i have a um, servant i i have a company that has employed five people let your restlessness not end in those things let your restlessness be in are we are me am i and my household fulfilling purpose is this really where it ends because when you look at abraham in the old testament it was said that he had what cattle gold and silver but in the new testament when it was being spoken of about abraham while he was in heaven he said that abraham had fed and it was counted to him as righteousness this wealth and riches they matter but just here on the earth but when we cross yonder when christ comes shall we say okay the race that you had given us, we ran it, we have completed it. And now that crown of glory for fulfilling that which you wanted us to, we have, and here we have come, Lord. Thank you for what you have used our hands to do. And so at this moment, even as I hand up to uh, Mr. Tosin, let us ask God, Father, Lord, perhaps I have lost the race on the way. I have stopped where I was not supposed to stop. Lord, I ask for grace for grace to be restless enough to recover the destiny that have been lost to recover the real fortune which is my destiny and that of my household and that of my lineage father help me to recover it father restore lord i cry restoration father lord have mercy let your mercy prevail let us unmute and begin to pray let us unmute right now and pray father the lord masupra hikaya thank you for your word that you have spoken father we have come lord malib Lord, we had casted our eyes on the things which you have not you had not called us to and so lord we come lord Father, we come in repentance this moment, Lord. Father, Lord, that our restlessness, even as we become restless, to recover our fortune for the restoration, that it will not be for the vague things. It will not be for the vain things, Lord. That it would be for the things, Lord. The main thing, the main, the major one, Lord, which you want to restore, which is our, our destiny in his lord which is our purpose lord father lord we thank you oh thank you mighty father for your word that has come for lord we bless your name lord for it is in jesus name that we pray amen amen father thank you for your word lord your word has comfort it says that your word will not return to you none and void without accomplishing that which it has been sent father you you have sent your word I ask, O oh Lord, that let it accomplish all that you want it to. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.